So now I'm going to answer all the questions people asked me about Sonic a month ago in this vlog, because there's definitely nothing else Sonic related to talk about today. <sighs> okay, okay. So, Morio Kishimoto is revealed to be the second director of Sonic Forces. He was responsible for every single gimmick-filled Nintendo Sonic game. <laughs> also notice he did direct Sonic Colors, but didn't direct Generations, and neither did the other director. So, so far the from the creators of Sonic Colors and Generations is not correct. Let's turn that into from the makers of Sonic 06 and Sonic Lost World. Yeah, that, that about sums it up. Green Hill returns, but with sand in it. As a wise man once said, I don't like Green Hill Zone, it's coarse and rough and irritating and it gets everywhere. Well said. New character, Bobsy, what could possibly go wrong here, joke here, or there's rumors it's a custom character, blah blah blah, whatever, I don't really care. Looks like David the Intern to me. Everyone's saying the same thing, so I don't feel like repeating it. I'm with you guys, I'm not super happy about this. The biggest thing I was looking for with the new Sonic game is that it would be more tight with a more focused identity. Because Sonic Lost World was such a pile of contradicting ideas that, that killed itself. And so far, this game did alright, except with classic Sonic, and kept its war theme going on. But now we suddenly have Sonic Lost World visuals. Oof. And now with the Sonic Lost World director returning, I really get the sense that this game will be another giant pile of random ideas contradicting and fighting each other, like what killed Lost World for me. But we'll see! And I was so complimenting the city, the, the graphics, that it had those cartoony blocky mountain elements in it. But, but used them subtle. It was a nice mix between old and new. I, I thought it was a pretty great way of combining the art styles as one whole. But then now you get Green Hill Zone and it's straight back to full punch in the face baby graphics like the Lost World had. None of that sub subtlety here. One potentially cool thing about this, as stated, there are some cartoony and abstract alien elements to the city, but there's also weird out of place realistic details in the Green Hill Zone footage like the palm tree, so it's possible the story will revolve around uh, two dimensions merging with each other or something, explaining why there's two Sonics again. Zeke already said a few times in the past, in private, that the Sonic universe is supposed to take place in two worlds, the realistic human infested world and a cartoony anthro world I suppose, so maybe that means this game will actually explore that concept? That's pretty cool, so that could be good news. But yeah, the level design, the art style... Eh. Also, does this mean that Sonic Lost World graphics style is retcon that is no longer fitting for the Lost World of Hex, but is now just generally represents classic Sonic in general? That's kinda lame, but whatever. I don't know, man. It's a disappointment, but Forces could work this way to its advantage. All I'm saying is the big E3 reveal has a lot to prove, because all kinds of alarm bells are going off in my head. Many possible problems from Sonic Lost World seem to be popping up again. <sighs> Only waiting for Written by Pontef and Graf and a brand new purpley green wisp to turn Sonic into a spoon so he can feed soup to a giant donut to show up is left for forces can finally hit the oh fuck this jackpot. It's gonna be a crazy ride to November. But right, the questions. Okay, first Sonic question was something asked after the previous video. Toad last, thank you Roger, but what about OVA Robotnik? Okay, so I went briefly through what made each separate Eggman... Okay, so I went briefly through what made each separate Eggman unique from each other in the previous video. From each series or, uh, of the Sonic series. And I skipped over Robotnik from the OVA movie, when I really skipped over him. I consider him just part of all the Japanese Robotniks. An evil genius who is a child at heart, and always is willing to enjoy himself with minor trolling, while waiting for a bigger plot to take hold. Again, if you want to go for a comedic Eggman, this is a decent example. Him just screwing around with video games while waiting for the Metal Sonic trap to close in. Reminds me a lot of the Man of the Year video where Eggman dresses up like Sonic and starts causing havoc in town. Ah, when comedy Eggman was like a Looney Tunes cartoon character and, and not dad jokes at a boring sitcom humor. Ugh. Timothy McCurry, think it would be interesting to hear your thoughts about Sonic's reputation, where it was, where it is now, and what it might be. Also, I would like to see you discuss the effect of the Sonic Twitter on the franchise. By the way, I have another request for you if you were put in charge of the Sonic franchise, what would you do? Hey! Do you think you could do a dissection of what Sonic Boom could learn from similar shows? Well, gee, that's a lot of questions. Sonic's reputation, outside of the fanbase, I presume? Outside of the fanbase, it's mostly known as a washed-up franchise that's never been good since the Genesis days and is only attracting people with autism. Ah, ha, ha, ha. So despite Colors saving the franchise, I get the sense its reputation is still frozen at the spot where it was a decade ago. 
As for the Sonic Twitter account, it has taken off the rough edges of Sonic's reputation, so now it's less only pathetic losers play this shitty series lol and turn it more into a f more friendly, yay, Sonic's crazy wacky franchise, and we're its crazy wacky friends, let's have some fun, wee atmosphere, and that helps fans feel better about themselves, but it's not really helping the franchise reputation much in the outside world, I think. Being able to laugh at, at the memes of Sonic franchise doesn't necessarily translate to actual, you know, loyal customers. Weber is a very pleasant person and usually knows how to quell rowdy people and smooth things out and give a human face to Sega. So my compliments to him, he's doing a very good job, especially if you compare him with the PR teams of Mighty Number no. 9 and Ukulele. <laughs> However, I think that Twitter and its actions rely a lot on in-jokes and in-group fun, which is great when you're in that group, having tons of jokes and crazy stuff to share and creating a wonderful parties and events to join in together, but at the same time it also creates a larger and larger rift between those who like this approach and those who don't, and people not into memes and self-deprecating empty nostalgia meme parties are more disconnected from the main franchise more than ever and that's causing some tensions these days i wish the twitter knew how to interact with people who aren't in the meme scene but when i had my interview with weber last year we could never really get him to understand our points or perspective his usual response to my questions were more about bringing more of a cool factor back into the twitter account and, and bringing those those comics translating those japanese comics or like having more cool fan art and cool stuff. It usually resulted in him trying to stroke my ego in, in talking funly about the Avenger 06 games, never really understanding my point of view or having any awareness of what he's doing with his Twitter or what, what I'm trying to go to. It kind of reminds me of that South Park episode with a chin Pokemon whenever people raise their concerns against the Japanese manager, he instead starts talking about how their American penises are so big and my, and my penis is so small. It's irritating. Although at least his sense of humor has improved immensely these days. Some of his more recent uh, comedy bits are a lot funnier than in the past. If I was in charge of the franchise, I'd be fired within a day. Or become crushed in a merciless corporate atmosphere and become a meek, spineless yes-man. Oh, you mean in a fantasy magical way where I'm actually a competent person? I think what I would do is make free low budget spin off games at the same time. With one with a Sonic Color style platform heavy game with sarcasm humor. One a 3D spectacle arcade type game, kind of Tony Hawk Downhill or something, but very little platforming and very little story but tons of spectacle. And one game that's very story driven RPG ish. Then based on how well those three free games will do and sell, and based on that I can decide how much platform, spectacle, or story focused the next main games will be. What could Sonic Boom learn? Easiest answer to that is to watch my Sonic Boom Retrofied episode and eventually the second one that I'm still working on, basically injecting more of a Looney Tunes cartoon vibe into it, but that's my own interpretation. For the show itself, I don't know, I barely even know what the show is trying to accomplish. To be honest, it seems to want to be like the Simpsons a lot, with the high emphasis on the villagers. But in Sonic Boom, there are only roadblocks to the heroes to keep them from adventuring. Outside of Zoe and Sword the Eagle, most of the villagers are mostly annoying. So I, I never really liked them as much as I like the Simpsons town folk, who have more of an actual life and more of an actual sympathy points and are more fun and are more... You, you actually want to be with the Simpsons villagers, with the, the Sonic Boom villagers, I never have that. Just want to get away from them as quickly as possible, which is just being annoying or bore you or keep you from sleeping. Or is Sonic Boom trying to be a sitcom? In that case, define the characters better. I barely know what they're supposed to be. With a sitcom, you immediately know what a character is. Their goal in life, their attitude, their personality, their running gags. With Boom, I still barely know. They're, they're either brainless punchline generators that just say funny lines but that don't really help define the characters. Jokes are just meant to be immediately disposed of and forgotten and do nothing to build the character. Or there are planks of wood shoved into whatever random role they're required to play in each individual episode. Tails and Eggman are really the only ones properly developed to some degree, but Tails is too weak to carry the entire show and Eggman doesn't have enough contrast to anyone to really play off against, so eh. If Sonic Boom is trying to be a cartoon, then Sonic Boom needs a lot more energy, which is why I made my versions a lot more like a Looney Tunes cartoon. 
I guess Sonic Boom's biggest success is in being a source of fan service, and that its greatest skill and keeps getting it. Um, that's its greatest skill and keeps getting it meme love. Although personally, I find the attempts at fan service mostly awkward. Oh look, it's Shadow! Who is he? What's the relation? Why do we know him? What What is his purpose? I don't know. He's a popular character because member Adventure 2. This Knuckles is the last surviving Echidna from Angel Island. Really? You're adapting that piece of lore here? I can only assume the other Echidna has died of stupidity because if this is supposed to imply that this Knuckles has the same backstory as the Adventure Knuckles, then that doesn't really work at well. Boom is so weird, it's like the character personalities in history only exist for the sake of specific jokes and then immediately disappear again. The whole Son Amy thing, it's fascinating how little chemistry they have whenever there isn't a specific joke about their alleged crush on each other. They'll make a joke about how they totally love each other one moment and then Sonic blows up her home because he's too lazy the next scene. Kaboom! Bye bitch! Good luck fixing your home! By the way, I totally love you! Heck, a recent episode had Knuckles break the fourth wall to shrug that he likes nature just because his official character description says he allegedly does. It's like the characters are just empty puppets with no soul, until 50 episodes in where all of a sudden, just for the sake of one joke or one moment, I'm suddenly magically supposed to be convinced of this totally well-established personality that I supposedly magically have. It's like watching 50 episodes of Dexter's Lab with him, just watching TV board, and then Dee Dee vaguely mentioning he likes science and has a lab somewhere as a side remark 50 episodes in. Like when Till suddenly jokes that Amy has an unhealthy obsession with Sonic and, and sticks jokes that she's nervous around Sonic. Sure, whatever you say, I'll fondly remember that. I'll fondly remember that supposed alleged personality next time she's just a plank of wood next to Sonic. At this point, I'm less surprised in how little effort they put in the show, and more that they're actually putting too much effort into it. <laughs> At this point, I wouldn't even bother with stories and animation anymore, and just film the voice actors in the studio. Hi, I am voice actor. I'm saying words because script words I say have no meaning. They are just magic sounds coming out of my mouth. Please find them amusing because this is comedy. Oh, here is random fan service. <clears throat> Sonic 06 has loading times. I am absolutely in a romantic relationship with this character, and I acknowledge that Silly Acorn is a thing that exists. Feel free to scream in fan joy for five hours for these amazing fan service statements I made. And people love the show for it, so again, all the power for it. I gave up on it. It's not for me. Besides making my own episodes again, I guess. Code Red, other franchises you like to see Sonic take after, seeing as he doesn't have a very consistent identity of his own. Um, I prefer to just make Sonic games that's an actual Sonic game. Got enough of experimental garbage right now. But if I have to point to a different franchise I wish Sonic would be inspired by, I guess I picked Just Cause. Not so much the exact type of gameplay, Just Cause an open world, not sure if that works with Sonic. But Just Cause is 100% shameless and pure crazy action spectacle. It gives you tons of freedom. You're this super powered, awesome super character with hundreds of options. You can shoot, lay bombs, hire other people, tie ropes together to set up traps, launch enemies like a catapult, launch yourself like a catapult. There's always so many crazy ways you can approach situations or solve missions and cause havoc. I love it. Cool character with hundreds of options, bunch of missions, no stress, no trouble. Just have fun. If Sonic games can get that design philosophy working, then I'd be a very happy camper. Dr. Eggman himself, apparently, yeah, I'm sure. He asks, Sonic Sega of Japan versus Sega of America. Right now, there's a lot of English fan translations of games on Japanese, and by them, you can clearly see what English official translation are either poor with a lot of mistranslation or dumbed down with a lot of stupid jokes, cheesy exclamations or explanation for a western audience. There's also how Sonic was perceived in the west up until Sonic Adventure, western and Japanese written scripts, culture differences, and a lot of other things there's to discuss. Yes, there's a lot of things to discuss, I guess. It's a bit much right now. Um, well, recently I did saw the uh, Sonic Colors fan translation, so I guess I can talk about that. It's kind of weird how sometimes the visuals match the Japanese version better, but sometimes it fits with the American one more. Made me wonder several times for what version the visuals were primarily made. When I had my interview with Pontac years ago, I, I did notice he said that uh, when they were just, Sega was discussing the, whether they should get rid of Orbot and Cubot or not, that he 
managed to convince him to keep the robots in. So apparently he was already present during the planning phase of Sonic Colors and did have some influence on the matter. So I, I guess he must have had some active role in what happened. But I don't know how much exactly he should have pressed that. Anyway, like in my older videos, I mocked an early scene where Eggman says, Why don't you try to fight Sonic to, to Orbot? But then it immediately cuts to him summoning a giant robot, making me disappointed we don't get to see Orbot awkwardly trying to fight Sonic. In the Japanese version, it's more that Cubot is impersonating a ninja or a samurai or something, and he wants to fight Sonic, and Eggman tells him off, and then sends the other robot instead. So that works visually what much better with the, the visuals of the, the cutscene. So that works much better with the visuals of the cutscene, I suppose. But then in other scenes, the English version works much better. Sonic breaking the fourth wall to tell the audience that he's just calling the Wisps aliens. That works as a fourth wall comment. In, in the Japanese version, he just repeats that they're called Wisps, mocking, making that a very weird statement to confine to the audience or break the fourth wall for. Another scene that works better in the English version, in the end, Sonic mocks Tails for being useless, and then Tails goes on that angry rant about all the things he did. In the Japanese version, Sonic actually immediately thanks Tails for his help, so Tails now dramatically ranting about all his contributions feels really awkward. Or maybe Sonic was sarcastic and I missed that. I don't know. It was really weird. But yeah, generally speaking, I don't really care with the Japanese version. I, I still don't care for Color's plot. The translation jokes are still just annoying and ruin the pace. Although, to the Japanese credit, at least they make more logical sense there than in the... Because now the translation jokes are puns or rhymes or just getting mine or Kenji wrong. So it makes more sense than in the English version where the mistranslation is just completely random. It's also clear the Japanese writers have a much better grasp on the characters. Instead of Sonic and Tails banter in the elevator being about Dr. Ackman being a stupid dumb asshole for letting the keys in, in the Japanese version, Tails is considered whatever Ackman has a security system in the elevator in case hooligans or burglars would illegally enter the theme park, concluding that he probably doesn't because no thief would dare crossing Ackman. So it makes look makes Dr. Ackman look more like a, like a badass, like an actual Fred, and making jokes about that instead of making him look like a dumbass. Or Tills' dismissal of Sonic's concerns that Eggman is committing crimes with the theme park. It works a lot better in the Japanese version, where he doesn't really doubt whether Eggman is evil himself. He's just skeptical that he would do it in such a public place, right after calling attention to himself in the theme park. So that works a little better, although it does point attention to a big plot hole of the game. Then again, as I said before, Sonic Colors or any Pontef games don't really have plot holes, because... They don't really have enough plot to even be punching holes into to begin with. It's more like plot evaporate. It's more like plot evaporation. Eggman's entire attempt to make the theme park legit never really goes anywhere or has any fucking point at all. And again, Tails is more modest and cute, less self-centered like how Pontev always writes him. So there's some bits of improvement, much better grasp on the characters, but really, again, there isn't really much that can save Sonic Color's story. It's still dull, bad pacing, no payoffs to its setups. The jokes are less cringe, but more confusing and weird. <coughs> so can't really say if the jokes are better. It, it's more, much more about whether you prefer cringe over confusion. So, eh. Also interesting, in the Japanese version, Cubot never gets his normal voice back. In fact, he doesn't really have a normal voice. He only regains the ability to switch between them at will. So now him constantly switching voices in, is his entire personality and not just an issue we was dealing with in that one game. Shikla. I heard about this thing that in a Japanese manual of Sonic Heroes, Ekma was actually considered a womanizer, not a feminist. If this is the case, I suppose the obvious reason for this possible change could be mistaken wording or something. But if it was actually done deliberately, would you consider this to be done because Western countries have different ideas about, about what's appropriate for a younger audience compared to Eastern Western mindset? Or would there be other possibilities? Oh, I didn't know that. That's interesting. Can't know for sure, but if I had to guess, I would think it's an accidental mistranslation. I don't think that womanizer are that shunned from children's entertainment. You got your Papella Pews and your Johnny Bravos and other Romeos. Not to mention Sonic was meant for young teens at that point in time. Remember, Sonic Heroes is right before we got Shadow, damn fourth emerald to the hedgehog, so. Also, if I was a translator and I would have to censor so and I would have to censor womanizer away, I wouldn't use the complete exact opposite of that word then you're shooting yourself in the foot if it ever comes up in a future game episode or episode. If I had to tone down Womanizer, I would put it like, Dr. Eggman's looking for a girlfriend, or something like that. 
at least you can still work that in with any womanizer plots, I suppose. So my guess is either someone mistranslated or someone deliberately made that up, that their own world, as a joke or to make a point or whatever. Either way, neither the womanizer or being a feminist is ever demonstrated in action, as far as I can tell. Him letting Rouge work under him is the closest feminist thing he ever did. And as for womanizer... Well, I suppose it doesn't help that the only females he's ever interacting with are unarranged alien creatures. Did he ever interact with Officer Topaz from Sonic X? Otherwise, it's the African Ladies and Unleashed that's the closest of an adult human female he ever got to, so... I can, can, I can kind of see both being true. Eggman the Feminist. Well, he certainly wants women to be, have equal rights to men when it comes to them being mindless slaves worshipping the Eggman Empire, I suppose. And him womanizing, well, he has a bit of an ego, so he has a bit of a Johnny Bravo, Donald Trump kind of thing going on, so. Worked both ways, I guess. Ryan Casey, do you think there could ever be a Sonic game that is truly considered unanimously un un great again? Will there be another masterpiece of a Sonic game ever truly be made? Or will another Sonic game ever be considered a masterpiece by Sonic fans? <laughs> Nah, the fan base is too shattered. I think Sonic Generations is the closest we'll get to a game hitting as many positive notes as possible, and even that game had some pushback. The series is just helplessly shattered by now. And Sonic Team remains kind of incompetent and indecisive. Project 1114 or 1114. What are your thoughts on previously recorded videos on why the classic Sonic games are overrated? Previously recorded, the game show from the gang from Red Letter Media, the Nuts Plinkets, Nuts J folks. Jack and Rich. I like Rich. He's uh, funny in a weird idiot kind of way. Jack, I'm not too fond of. He has this thing where he's patiently, slowly explaining something. Like revealing some shocking and complex information while he's really just talking about something super obvious. But whatever, they made a video about Sonic 1's poor balance between the speed sections and the platforming. And while I definitely agree with their points there, it is kind of weak to use Sonic 1 to make a statement about the entire series. Sonic 2 had a way better balance. Besides that, I don't really care. The previously recorded guys are kind of like Nintendo fans in that regard. They approach games from a different angle than what Sonic's made for. Sonic spectacle, instinctive, organic, not designed to work like a well-oiled technical machine. It's just there to get your fist pumping. So yeah, they have a good point and I agree with them. But their priorities and perspectives is different than what Sonic's made for. Just like whenever Nintendo fans criticize the series. This is why I made that statement last year where I said uh, I, I don't think Nintendo fans should comment on Sega games and Sega fans should comment on Nintendo games. They just have an entirely different philosophy around game design. And uh, that seems to be all the questions I had about Sonic. Besides all the new ones I'll get about what I think about the new characters and that one level of Sonic Forces. And the answer to all those questions is... Eh. But whatever. Bye-bye. Let me know in the comments. Whatever.